as noisy as fan. Have a little quietude. Have a little bit of calm air. This thing I'm about to uh, show you. Hey, this is Eric, and I'm a fancy man. I have a shirt that says I'm a fancy man. I got this from my dad. He made it for me after I exclaimed that I was such a fancy man that I preferred to eat chicken wings with a knife and fork. And uh, Robin Hermanson made me this T-shirt, and it's got a little, uh, it's got a little uh, knife and fork and some chicken wings on a plate. It says fancy man. So now you know. That's how I became a fancy man. Uh, but the main thing I'm concerned with on this stream is uh, not chicken wings, but my game called The God Killer is a top-down 3D puzzler written in Unity. And most recently, I've made progress on musical sound effects. I'm going to demo those in just a moment, but then quickly move on, quickly move on to what I call the God Hands. So there's a character in this game called God, fictitious God, not your God, probably not, and uh, he has a conflict with the main character who you control, and that's the basis of the whole game. Um, but what does, what does God look like in this game? He looks like a pair of floating hands. And I have um, a device, a device called the Leap Motion. Okay, and it looks like Looks like this. It's small. It's um, a sensor. It picks up the positions of your hands. I think it's uses the same kind of infrared technology as a, as a Kinect does. I think. Um, and I've done some tests, and I know that I can record hand motions. So while an actor is recording their voice, they will with their hands gesticulate, gesticulate, gesticulate have all kinds of gestures which are captured even better than this video that you're seeing which is a little bit laggy. Um, it will correspond to the audio. I'll play the audio. I'll play the hand motions. There is a, a feature built into the Leap Motion SDK that uh, not, not a feature so much as example code for recording to a file and playing it back. It's all kind of open sourced or uh, distributed with their SDK, I can take that code and I can use it to create the same functionality. I don't need to have a leap motion attached to the game while it's in play mode. I only need it for recording the actor. So I just play back these animation files to those hands that you see in front of you on the screen and that will be uh, a lot of the motion of the God character. I'll come back to that. I'll come back to the God hands and I'll start just calling them hands because if I always use the word God um, and somebody comes in midstream, I don't want to have to keep on explaining that it's not a religious thing. It's just there's a fictitious character in the game called God, and uh, that's the deal with that. I'm not a promoter of any religion or even a, particularly a detractor, at least not with the hat that I'm wearing currently. Okay, so. When last we were streaming, I completed a, a feature where notes are played when the main character here goes up or downstairs, and they uh, use a, a something called a shepherd shepherd tones. Um, and those shepherd tones are just kind of a way to continuously ascend or descend. In, in the notes uh, and sort of hide that you have to keep going back to the beginning again and starting over. Um, it was moderately successful, not the full audio illusion shepherd tone effect I was hoping for, but good enough to make a great reusable sound that I can play in different places in the game. Um, so I'm going to demo that here. I switched out the sound effect I was using last night from a xylophone to a celli. I like the celli a lot better. Here's what it sounds like. Character went down the stairs. Character goes up. It might
might be a little too pronounced right now. I could see turning the volume down on it a bit, particularly if you have to hear it a lot. Um, very CPU challenge today. Not sure what that's about, except I do know what it's about. It's about the streaming. Okay, some other things to, uh, that play into this. Other sound effects are also musical. So there's this thing where I check around me, I scan around me for what directions I can fling in. I do that by holding the shift key. It's playing a chord in key and each note of the chord corresponds to one of the rays. So if it's not possible for a ray to extend in one direction, I don't hear the chord. I just hear a note for each direction where it's successful. So it, it's not just a sound effect. It's tied into the actual behavior of, of the game element. Uh, and it randomizes a little bit. The notes it selects are, all, are always in a musical key. So every note that I've played so far Oh, did I do the... There's one other one. That's the fling action. It plays that horn noise. And there's a few other ones, too. I won't go into them all. Um, so, um, yeah, er, all the instruments that are musical, they play in key. So that means if I've got a musical track playing at the same time like a, a set piece of music a soundtrack of the game and I know what the key of it is in even like different segments of the song I know what key those segments are in I can have all of the sound effects harmonizing with that music while it's playing Next thing to work on, back to, back to the hands, back to the hands. These hands, these hands, they are meant to follow the character around, but they take a lot of space. The, the level needs to be designed specifically to ensure that there's certain areas that these hands can be present in and have enough, enough space to play all their gesticulating animations. So I have this concept of uh, what I call a hand stage and they will be um, boxes. Uh, what's the geometric term for it? Um, quadroid I want to say? I think that's wrong though. Anyways, they'll be like a three-dimensional quadrilaterals, uh, you know, the box shaped spaces in three space. Um, and uh, they will define locations that it's possible for the hands to be um, inside of the level. And they'll be put together as nodes so that there's each one in the level is in a place where it can be a path can be um, routed throughout the level, such that the the hands never travel through walls or um, uh, cause any kind of weirdness. So there's going to be a bit of level design that um, has these these boxes in certain places, and I have to come up with the logic for moving the hands to the different hand stages. Um, the other thing I would want to do, I think I'll do it first before the, the other task I just talked about is uh, make the hands inside of the hand stage always rotate to face the direction of the player. And that'll look immediately pretty cool. Um, but it will also give the effect 
that the, the voice that's emanating from the location of the hands in a headless way is actually addressing the character. So as the character's moving around, these big giant hands are gonna, they're gonna swivel around and face wherever she's at. Um, that also gives me another big advantage in that if the actor, while the actor is recording a gesture where he points straight ahead or down in a certain spot, I can be pretty much guaranteed that because the hands are going to be swiveled to face the player, it will point at the player. So I can say that I can say to the actor, I can put a little marker in front of them and say, whenever you say the word you, um, you point at that marker and the actor points at that marker and I get the animation of the hands from the leap motion and then I play it back and magically, magically those hands will be pointing at you, the character, as you're walking around through this level. And it's gonna look cool. So let me get to the next part of it, which is uh, getting these guys in a, inside of a hand stage and making them rotatable. So this game is a Unity game. Uh, it is uh, written with lots of C-sharp code. I'm gonna start out by taking these hands, getting them inside of this new object that I call a hand stage. I already worked out earlier today what I want the dimensions of this thing to be. Uh, let's go with four by nine it's gonna be pretty big I just want to take a look at that see see how crazy that looks for putting in the level uh, so that's the idea that it would all fit inside of this box and that the hands inside of the box would be able to just rotate around inside pretty easily without causing trouble and occasionally kind of reach forward a fair distance so that already looks challenging with the dimensions that I've, I've picked for it uh, let me let me see how stupid it is I might shrink it down a tiny bit so I'll turn off this mesh renderer just so I can see better and these guys. I think most of the time they should be much closer together than that hand box was showing. So that is just above the egg. And the hands, I'll center them inside the box a little better. I think it's okay to put the hands back in the box a bit because I think the nature of hand gestures if you think about it, is normal is the hands are kind of close in and then the little spikes of their movement are every once in a while they go out they go out in front they go out in front but not nearly so often or as with as large of a range do you take your hands and pull them back like you don't pull them back 
as far as you tend to point forward. So I'm even I'm just gonna put them all the way to the back of the box minus a little bit of room. And that will be kind of like the the zero location in a way. And when the actor is recording, um, if I see them like going back too far with their gestures, then I'll just say, no, 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 just a little more forward. So that'll be kind of tough. I can see that being like a, a long, arduous session, but I can still see it working. So let me see. I've got those hands in the middle of the box there. Doesn't look like they have a lot of room to move left or right. I suppose I might need to have the actor constrain their movements a little bit. The other option I have is making the box bigger. Um, but there's a problem that the frame of view for the player is limited in size as well. So if I have, there's a, there's a number of, of things I'm trying to solve for here and I'm trying to pick good compromises. If the hands seem too small, they're unimpressive. If the hands travel over too far of a distance, um, you'll lose it off the sides of the camera view. And they'll just kind of be all over the place and you, the player, will, will not really understand. Uh, let me see if I can get a more representative view. I think it's more like that. So if they were like that, that kind of works. Let me, let me, let me, let me take a look. So what I'm trying to decide on is if I, if I should enlarge that uh, hand stage. All right, so this is the view. Now, one thing I'm seeing is, is I've got actually room to expand the hand stage. Uh, the hands don't have to be that close together. I can move them a little bit out. With this kind of view, they, they could go off to the left and right quite a bit. Um, I wanted to make that hand stage area square so that if these hands rotate around, that they'll still, they'll still be uh, room without them knocking into something. So however far I go out left and right, I'll also have to go out forward and back. Uh, let me walk around just a little bit. Oh. So there's an issue I need to uh, I need to turn off uh, a feature where it treats these as ceilings to be walked under, which causes the camera to zoom in fast or zoom in underneath, but um, so that you would be able to see yourself under the hands. I'm going to turn that off in an uh, easy way. Um, and also I'm going to, I'm going to expand the, the hand box a little bit because it seems to be the way we're going here. So I'll put this back out. Left. This back out. Right. And let's see. Change this to ignore raycast. That'll make it so that the uh, uh, I can walk underneath the hands without getting weird on me. Okay, hand stage. Also ignore ray cast on it. And then let's expand it. That means I have to expand it. Oh I'm already out. Oh man. Okay.
I really want to get this part right because a lot of level design depends on it. Uh, let me just change the material on this so it's a little more easy to see what's going on. So it's no problem to move it out left and right. The thing that's giving me pause is that I'll also have to extend it out in this direction as well. On the other hand, I look at the hands and it looks like they've got a little bit of play. So if the actor, if they, if the actor was spraying their hands apart just a little bit, they're still good. So I, I think that, that might be a good compromise of all of the constraints I'm, I'm inside of. So let me check that one more time inside the player. Oh, I should have turned off the mesh render. It's going to look really weird. So I'm excited to see the hands face the player. I'm excited because I think it's, it's going to, that all on its own is going to be a little bit unnerving to see. Uh, I should, should uh, definitely give this pair of floating hands some automatic personality. Okay. Now I can walk under the hands. Normally, the rule in this game is, is normally that I don't want anything to obscure the view of the player. But these hands are kind of like a, a special case where their main appearance in the game is not during moments of gameplay, but story-related moments where a character is going to talk a little bit. So the levels can be designed to, to be okay with the player ducking underneath the hands just for a little bit um, and not having that impact gameplay in a frustrating way. But everything else I say like if you duck under a low ceiling the camera instantly it goes down and, and shows you in that spot. Uh, so I think I've got a pretty good start for this, this uh, hand stage here. I think I can start um, writing some code to just make it rotate to face things. So to do that, I need to move these guys off into this new hand stage object. Okay. Turn off this mesh renderer. Might as well remove this collider. I will never use it. Never, ever, ever. Um, I don't actually like having like a, a mesh here, but it's useful right now because it helps me kind of easily adjust uh, the space that this box appears in. So later on, I'll probably take out the mesh. Uh, so let's create another game object. In fact, I am going to create even. No, the next thing I'm going to do is, is center the the pivot of this. This, this stage. Um, there's a feature built into Pro Builder that lets me do that. But before I can do that, I need to have like a, an object that takes up the full space, and right now this is kind of skewed towards towards one end of it. Uh, so let's build a cube. And where are you at, cube? Where are you at? Okay. Moved you way, way the hell up there. Go back down. Alright, so I'm just moving this cube inside the box so I can set the pivot point. 
I don't know why Unity doesn't have a, a built-in way. It probably does. I probably just am unaware of it. But I read like articles. They say Unity doesn't have a built-in way to simply set the pivot point of uh, a mesh or a transform. And I'm like, why? 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 Why would you leave us without that feature? I even know how I do it. This little thing that moves in three dimensions. I'd have like some kind of key you press. And when you're holding down that key, you just move this thing, and it doesn't move the object, it, it moves the center point. That's it, you'd be done. That whole feature would be written. But instead, I use a third party tool, which is sort of official, because it's part of the Unity uh, packages in the asset store, but it's separate. Do the center pivot, no, not on the whole object. Or actually on the collection, I want to do that. So, uh, center pivot, try that again. What just happened? Where? I lost a hand. Where'd it go? Alright, undo. Ah, oh, God, this is annoying. Oh yeah. So, where did my other hand go? Where Where do you think you are? Where are you? You're just over here with the first one. Is that it? No. Uh, something weird happened. All right, I'm just going to undo until it's back to some kind of normal state. I want to see two hands. Why can I not see two hands? God hand right is there. When I click on God hand left, it doesn't allow me to select it and it's not visible anymore. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Let's, um, let's first I'll just unpack this. Still can't do anything with that, apparently. Uh, well. Oh, you're up over here? Is that what's going on? It's like it's, it's in two places at one time. That looks totally corrupted. I'm, I'm getting rid of that. I'm just going to recreate this. Um, So maybe the left one is fine, so let's try... Or maybe the right hand is fine, so let's try putting the left one back in. Unpack you. So I don't want to mess something up in the prefab. Uh, okay. Let's try this whole centering pivot thing again. All right. 
first I'll, I'll show you the problem I'm trying to solve. So if I do a rotation of this box, it doesn't rotate from its center. It rotates way off over here. It rotates basically around this, this uh, corner here, like a hinge. What I wanted to do, let's see if it, yeah, it's just going around that, that hinge there. So what I wanted to do is rotate based on the center point. And I have to use a hack because of limitations in Unity that I believe they should have fixed a long time ago. Uh, listen to me complain about free software that works great. using the cube temporarily to create a collection of objects that uh, will have a different center point. Huh, it occurs to me I, I'm probably making this more complicated than I need to. So. I don't need to center these objects. I need to center this overall cube thing. So let me delete that. And I'm, I'm going to save the scene right now because last time I tried to do this, it, it went all fucked. Save the scene. Save the project. All right, hand stage. Will you be centered? Okay, it's centered. It's probably centered, but also at the same time. This god hand went down and did its old trick of moving out of the box. Um, and that's weird. Let me try undoing, see if it puts it back to a good way. Okay. It did. <laughs> it messed up something else. That's fine. I, I think I figured out a way to do this without having to worry too much. No, R is messed up now. Okay. So I'm just going to open another scene and discard those changes I just made. This is just to get rid of that weird state that I don't want to deal with. So I already saved the scene prior to fixing, uh, uh, to making that mistake. So back to, I believe I called it start. Yep. Okay, so now my two hands are restored. I figure I can take them out of the stage object briefly, do that center pivot operation um, without them inside of it, and then maybe this weird little hacky feature that I somehow rely upon way too much, um, and it's like wildly useful too. Um, it will not mess up these two hands. I just move them back inside hand stage. And I 
keep losing the material because of a, another Quark of Pro Builder. Right, it might sound like I'm, I'm dissing on um, Pro Builder, but if it wasn't here, uh, man, I would have had so much more work to do. Um, just extremely valuable tool. I think actually the best thing to happen would be Unity would get even more behind Pro Builder than they are. Dump five million dollars into just making it like a, a wonderful modeling tool because it already is like really good. Uh, so okay, turn off this. Okay, now test my rotate. Actually, I'll leave that on. I can see the rotate better. Ninety. There we go. See, now it's rotating on its center. I didn't have to use this other trick people recommend of uh, creating like a, an offset object inside of the, the parent object. Nope, didn't need to do that. So that's, that is the end result I wanted. So now I want to write code that rotates this baby. Uh, These little gray bits are, are trails. They're automatically rendered when the objects move around. Let's see. So I'm thinking about, about that part. So I think it works for me to call the center point of the stage place where the player is expected to be if we've got these hands that are addressing her. So I'm just thinking about the, the math involved here a little bit because I got to rotate this thing around to face at her. This box won't always be right where she's at, the player. So, so if I take it away from the, the centered position, and I say, okay, she's over here. Uh, let, me, let me say, let's do the 45 degree angle case. So I'm, I'm just going through like what the calculations would be for the rotation before I write them in code. So then in this case, I would expect expect them to rotate like that to face her. Um, so say, say that she's at 45, say this is 45 degrees, she goes up here, it's good. there's going to be a corresponding rotation. Okay, so it's the angle that she's at from the center point of this box. So I'll be looking at the center point of the box, just the x and the z, this is just a two-dimensional operation and I'll be having that point towards wherever the player transform is at. Okay. Got it. I think I got it. Or at least I got enough that I can write some code that starts off a little bit wrong and then I can fix it as I go. So start to get into some code in here. And for now I'll call this aesthetics. Add new model behavior. I'll create one for the, the hand stage.
Tak. Uh, let me just for now assume there's always one hand stage, although later there'll be multiples. So let's see, let's call, uh, let's see, using names, uh, let's see, namespace. Let's see what that does. Let me just see what that does to start. It'd be interesting just to see if that, before I get into uh, anything more complicated, if something like that gets me close. Okay, I will leave this ugly box on just so I can see how the box is oriented more easily. So an interesting thing about this uh, first way of doing it is it's probably going to well it's going to do Y rotation as well. So I know how to constrain it to do X and Z only but it'll be interesting to see what it looks like with the Y rotation thrown in too. My thought is that's that's too much uh, freedom to give it because I would have to um, protect for those hands looking correct in a much larger uh, space. But let's just see what that looks like to start. My frame rate is much much better when I'm not broadcasting. Okay. Oh, I forgot to set the transform. That's an easy one. Come on. Where yet? Oh, you know, you can't crash that easy. Come on. You cannot crash that easy. Oh, you're just going slow. That's what you're doing. All right, so let's take the player, take her transform. Okay, let's put that in the hand stage. Oh, I gotta even do other stuff. Okay, never mind that part. I'm gonna add that script that I just created. All right. All right, that should do something. That should do something. Even if it's messed up, I'm I'm really interested to see what it actually does. It is rotating. It looks like it might even be
just facing like 180 degrees the wrong way, which is pretty easy to fix, pretty easy. Yeah, it's just pointing forward instead of backwards, essentially. So if you thought of like the back of the, the hands is pointing at you, it's doing that really quite correctly. Um, and I think I'm going to be reluctant to give up this, this Y rotation. thinking like when it gets to this area where um, one direction of movement suddenly means that it's it's all the way rotated around it's gonna look really weird if the player just kind of goes back and forth like this I mean even if well an easy part is just adding like kind of a a maximum movement per frame type of a thing and then it would like gradually turn around um, there'll be some playing with the the settings there to, to make it so it doesn't look stupid if the player is just like kind of fiddling around in here okay let me fix the thing with it pointing 180 degrees the wrong way I think I'm okay to turn off this uh, zone renderer too. So I can also filter out the Y rotation. It's an interesting enough thing that uh, I don't want to uh, take it out completely. I want to kind of play with it a bit. So it's done pretty easily. Um, you say float y or preserve y. I'll call it equals target y. Okay, and then <laughs> uh, Uh, oh, position one. No, it's not. It's it's a uh, it's a Euler angle. Euler angles. Y. Okay. Then target. Euler angles equals. Let's see. That's vector three again. basically override the Y rotation. I, I think I think that works. I, it seems really obvious to me that it would, but I could be wrong. I don't know if I've ever done it before. So that should preserve the Y rotation and make it so it just rotates uh, Honestly, it, it, it shouldn't even be. I've got oh, I've got it mixed around. It's X and Z that should stay constant, and Y is the one that should rotate. So I can do. I, oh, even easier. Okay, let's do this. X rotation equals. E. Set that, and then I say fix rotation y equals the new the new uh, let's see, 
the new y. So then I set x and z back. Yeah, it was I was getting it mixed around. It's the opposite of what I was saying. Um, now, so I've already got this code here. It's the same code to do the thing that I wanted to do, which was make it rotate 180 degrees so it's actually looking in the right place. I think I will normalize this a little bit by making it be a value between 0 and 360. It probably would have done that for me already, but all right. Let me just look at it one more time before I hit play. So it's costly, costly with my time to be wrong about some little thing. I'm copying the original rotation. I'm saying, look at the target, which I already know kind of works. Uh, then I'm copying over the new location with that, that Y rotation. And I'm copying it into like the old rotation, which still has X and Z as they were before this lookout was called. And then I'm adding 180 degrees to the, the Y rotation as I set it here. And then finally I take all of that and I set it back into um, the target. So I think that'll work. I think that's got a good chance of working. I, I would lay money. Not much, but $2 maybe. I think it'll work. One other doubt I have, which is sometimes that the Y rotation is uh, weird. What the hell? Now that's strange. What did I do? What did I do? It's like I'm setting the rotation of the entire world. Which is disorienting. Stuff. I do not understand <laughs> you got this going this way. Uh, all right, not playing around with that. Let's figure out what would I break. Uh, it's got to be something kind of simple. I, I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is. I'm saying the rotation of the player. And that wasn't what I meant. I meant to set the rotation of the hands. I think that's almost certainly it. So, yeah, that's it. So here I said the target, and it's supposed to be the transform. So the target is the player, and the camera is attached to the player. So if you rotate the player, that means that the camera is going to rotate as well. So that is it. I just set the wrong angles there. Try again. Try again, try again, try again. And this is not a game where I ever allow the camera to rotate. Yeah, it was interesting, but it's just outside of what the game is meant to do. It's supposed to just be a rock solid camera not rotated ever. And even the placement of the camera relative to the player is mostly in the same spot all the time, except when there's a ceiling that the camera should duck underneath. Bad frame rate due to broadcasting. That part makes me sad. I kind of wish. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. 
Okay, they are, they are correctly pointing. They are correctly pointing at the player. There's that kind of like way too fast type of movement there. Um, I'm going I'm to mess around with this just a little bit more. Looking for artifacts. But this is good because I'm noticing that I can be pretty far away from those hands in the room and I can still see them. So if, if the character, the main character, was talking and those hands were gesticulating, I'd still see them from a distance. So I've got a pretty good amount of distance I can move away from the hands and uh, still be aware of them. They do look vaguely ominous as they, as they rotate around. Um, there's also a thing where this is a little psychological if those hands move too quickly um, it feels almost like they're at your beck and call and God in this game, the character God is not meant to be anything like that so while he should have the power to move very quickly to different locations he shouldn't react too quick unless he unless he, he just really wants to so the next thing is to set some rotation uh, per frame rules so he doesn't I already knew he wasn't gonna whip around really fast like that uh, but also I think there's going to be uh, some nuance, some nuance to those rules. Okay, so let's I'm going to make some comments about design to think through how I'm going to do this before I do it. Things I want. Uh, animation not tied to frame rate. Scale with time. With, um, yeah, scale with time. hands shouldn't move shouldn't rotate faster at a certain rate or a delay before they start rotating Another option, or a rotation fatigue. So imagine, first you're having this conversation with the god character, and he's uh, he rotates pretty well with where you're at, and then you're kind of a bratty player, so you start like flipping around the room a lot. And then just like a little kid who was pushing a parent too far, the parent doesn't like get played 
after a while, the parent just kind of, uh, forget the metaphor. This character, he might just say, uh, if you're going to be so spastic, I'm not going to chase around with you wherever you go. So it kind of breaks this whole thing like the character does a bunch of crazy shit and then the god hands just dutifully follow around wherever wherever the, the player character goes. Uh, and then once you start behaving and acting like a normal person, then the rotation fatigue goes down and the hands are kind of back to uh, uh, be more responsive to you. That may be way too complicated. I, got, I like the idea, but I think I might like the idea too much uh, for the amount of effort I would have to add in. Or I should do more basic things first and get that working. Um, so I could just do Comparison, compare from y to 2y, and The other thing that's nice is to have um, logarithmic stuff. So instead of having the hands move at a constant clip as they're rotating, you know, one degree each frame or something like that, and then immediately when they reach the target angle, uh, they come to a complete stop. Can have the speed be adjusted based upon uh, how close you are to the target angle. And if you're close to the target angle, you move slower because you're kind of, kind of like smoothly rotating to that stop. Encapsulate this a little bit. Just thinking now. Uh, what are the things that I need to know to make this decision? I need to know current Y. Target Y. Um, delta time, so the time that has elapsed since the last frame. So that, that means if I have that time and I have like some top speed expressed as uh, angles per second, perhaps. I can, I can choose maximum speed to cap at. OK, so let's call this one float top speed. OK, so right now, 
or have implemented is just return target Y. rotation y is going to equal the turn value from, from above. So the current angle would be, it's not quite the current angle the way I did it. I've got an extra transform change here that I probably if I was being perfectly performant I wouldn't want to do when I do this look at. So I'm using the actual transform to, to perform this this calculation, it would be preferable to perform it without modifying the transform, but it's not going to hurt me that much either. I don't want to opt optimize prematurely. So I have fixed rotation at this point stores what I'll call for now the current version. Um, Just to make it easier to read, it's called current y fix rotation y. All right, that's current y. That's target y. Uh, this is going to be time delta time, and the top speed will be a constant. Let's just call that delta time there too. And tab rotate speed equals. I don't know. Let's see. What would be good? Let's let's start with uh, forty-five degrees per second degrees per second okay so right now this thing just what we saw is what this function what we just demoed is what this function actually is doing it's just returning the target what so I want to return something besides the end place that the hand would be ideally pointed if it was pointing straight at the player so I want to allow for smoother movement so get the distance between the two angles float uh, there's just some floating point math there come on uh, float angle distance equals absolute value between those two and that gives me the distance between the two angles or the amount of angle change um, so now I think these are good to be constants let's just make those constants private static read only flow and I don't need to pass them in. I think I'm going to need another constant, which is uh, called a uh, 
taper distance. Taper distance equals say the last five degrees of travel. Degrees. So we'll let the hands move at a hundred percent when they are over five degrees away. They'll we'll let them move at, at their top speed when they are at least five degrees away. But between five and zero degrees as they close into the target, their their speed will scale down proportionately to zero until they reach that their their target angle. So change this to be an offset. That'll be a more useful number, I think. distance greater than the taper distance? If so, it's going to be top rotate speed. Otherwise, it's going to be angle distance divided by the taper distance. Okay. Got to scale this by is is the time. So that time is going to be a, a whole value. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a a floating point value of seconds. So if I just simply say that and return the current angle plus angle direction times speed times delta time that might be it. I think that might be the, the smooth movement right there. So it's, it's worth thinking about just one more time before I hit play because that build replay cycle is so friggin long. So I'm passing in the current angle rotation along the y-axis and then the desired location to rotate to. The amount of time that's passed since the last update, uh, the last frame update. Okay, so then I get offset. So should it be current y minus target y? I think it's the other way around. You start with the location that you're going to. Because if this was at 45 and then 
Yeah, okay, I think that's right. If it's wrong, I just sw swap it back the other direction. Um, angle distance, absolute value of, of the offset. Angle direction is going to be 0, 1, or negative 1. Is the 0 case a problem? No, it's not. This will this will work. I don't need a special case. Um, so if the distance is past the taper distance, then we're just going to move at top rotate speed. If it's gotten in that last 5 degrees, I think it's going to look more interesting if I might make this larger. Um, then we start tapering down. Ah, there is that one weird case. So there's a, a case where the rotate speed can like just jump right to the point, kind of like a hole in one type of a scenario. Um, but imagine that, you know, there's no graceful coming to a stop on the golf course, but it's simply there's this long stroke and then ka-chunk, it just like hit the pole and went straight down to the hole. It would be that kind of ungraceful of the stop. Um, to make sure that doesn't happen, I need the taper distance to be larger. So I'm gonna start, start tapering 90 degrees. So that means if I get a hole in one type of a luck with the rotation, the closest it can get at top speed is 45 degrees away from the target and then it'll start slowing down and it'll still look okay all right excited to try this here we go play button too fast. It could be using the old code. I hope it's going to kick in with the new code. I'll be able to tell pretty quick. should also set the initial camera position so it's closer to where the player starts and that'll make this first part start up a lot faster. Uh, some kind of paralysis of sorts. That's kind of creepy. That's kind of creepy. Before I hit on play, I want to see if I can derive any uh, insights. So it is uh, it's not going between two angles. It's there's at least you know like five or six angles there, are probably more being represented. Um, it is going left to right. So it looks like it's trying to converge upon a target and overshooting it constantly. Coming, it's like it's like uh, it's like the putter on a golf course who just keeps on knocking the ball past the hole, needs to hit it softer. I'm not a golf guy. It's just the golf metaphor seemed to work on this one. Um, so let me see if it changes at all, if I can kind of go off somewhere else. Because one thing I don't get is, why isn't the, the target angle that it's converging upon changing as I, I change my direction? There it's still.
Okay. That starts kicking up there. Still. Okay, sun's off, well, obviously. Uh, before I forget, I'm gonna move that uh, player camera in a better spot so it'll start up faster. Got it way over here, which makes a nice cinematic pan, but that's not what I'm after right now. Uh, I just want, when I hit play, for it to start up a little bit quicker. Let's just move the player also closer to the hands. Actually, that is her level start position right there in front of the egg. Uh, the cam seems a little high up. Yeah, it is. So I can save a little time by moving it down. So that'll help it start faster. Um, this one's probably worth doing some breakpoints. So let's start debugging. Sometimes I have to wait again for a separate build to trigger in Unity. So before I hit play, I'm just waiting for that. Okay, maybe it's ready. Let me hit play. So I saw this video a long while back where there was this guy who was saying that the problem with debugging code is that we can't immediately see the results of the action in whatever the application is that we're uh, doing. And I thought, uh, it's insightful, I guess, but that just means make the build times go faster and I don't know why people don't concentrate on that, actually. Uh, all right. Um, so now, target Y is set to 45 degrees. And current Y is zero. OK, it's a good start. Here's my function where all the magic should happen. So I think angle offset will be, it's either going to be 45 or negative 45. 45. Distance will be 45. Direction 1. Speed. What's the delta time? Oh, it's super tiny. This might have something to do with it. Let me think of that. 0 0.02. 
So we've got one frame in, and then kind of curious. 0.02. How many milliseconds is that? I think that's uh, two milliseconds. Sounds like <laughs> one divided by 0 0.002. Uh, okay, point zero zero two uh, times one thousand. Yeah, it's two milliseconds. That's some stupid math right there. Um, what do I expect the speed to be? So the angle distance is greater <laughs> than the taper distance. It is. No, it's not. Oh, I guess it's just a... It's so close to it by floating point math that it's just right at the edge. So you probably can't see it, but when I look at the, the value here, it's 45.0000, four zeros and a two taper distance is 45 so to me when I look at those the angle distance is definitely larger but with floating point math when you get into higher precision numbers sometimes it, it surprises you so I'm going to chalk it up to floating point weirdness uh, and I'm okay with this angle distance uh, divided by the taper being used so let me see, what, what, what does that give me? I'm expecting it to give me... Oh, okay. Okay. I, I see, I see. Here, here's my problem. I didn't multiply this ratio here by the top rotate speed. So it's going to give me a number here that's like... Uh, like 1 or less. Huh. 0.5, huh? Taper distance? I would have thought it would be much closer to 1. Well, taper distance is 90, that's right. Oh, okay, 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 I even said something else that was stupid. I was thinking taper distance was 45, it's 90. So yeah, the angle distance is not greater than that. Okay, multiple mistakes. I'm not even going to keep going with the debug because I, I see how to fix one really obvious one. So this should be top, rotate speed times my ratio. Bring this down a line so it's much easier to see. Uh, hit play. Oh, it's going to keep coming back and back and back. Yeah, take that off. Wait, stop. Just you just stop, just stop, just stop. It's a pretty good goal to just get this uh, hand rotation thing working this session. Which I'm not doing too bad. Hour and a half working on this so far. Uh, I think I can do that. So that should be ready to go. Let's get Unity to pick up the changes, make the build. Try it first without the debugger. I can just set the breakpoint if I if I want to see it with the debugger.
did something different, but still messed up. Actually, I don't know if it did anything different. This might be exactly the same thing. I might be looking at the version of the code before my last change. This just looks exactly the same, actually. Let me set a breakpoint. Verify that it's picked up the new code at least. Okay. It's down here. What? Let me see what these factors are. Zero. Seventy-one. Okay. Speed. No, it's got the new code here. So let me see, what did I do with it underneath? So this should move it a big 35 degrees, which is significant. So current Y is zero. I'm gonna add this direction times the speed, 35. So that's saying I'm gonna travel 35 degrees per second and the delta time is is actually the time in seconds that's elapsed and that's 0.1 which is 100 milliseconds um, so in theory This current Y should get should get set um, like 3.5 degrees, something like that. Let me see what it actually evaluates to. Yeah. So it go for, it should go from zero to 3.5 degrees, which is significant travel. I think that part we're seeing question is when it comes back so one thing I want I want to know when it comes back is if the the target Y when I say it comes back it's gonna when I hit play it'll come back to this loop again and the target Y I'm thinking should be exactly the same but I could be wrong about that Okay, so it was 71.5. I'm going to hit play. Current Y is still at zero. Target Y is still 71.5. So the weird thing is, is why is current Y getting set back to zero? So I would have thought... Oh. Oh. I'm getting fixed rotation from the target. How does that even work? It doesn't. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it not work. Okay. So I made the same mistake here that I, I did previously. So I thought that the transform. Save that. Okay, it worked before when I wasn't using the, the basically this old value. Didn't need it. Did not need it at all. And X and Z rotation on the um, target happened to be exactly the same as the X and Z rotation on the hand. So that's why, even though I had the completely the wrong set of Euler angle angles to start with, it was working before.
it's only when I started using this current y value or the, the y of the original um, anyways oh. I hate it when I accidentally start the compiler going while while unity is in play mode I forgot to hit stop on it it's often some very painful results Uh, like maybe Unity will, will crash on me. I don't know. Well, if I do have to just restart Unity, then I will stop the stream. If I gotta do that, because that's really boring to show on a stream really boring and I hate force quitting I, I mean it's bad because you can lose lose data and stuff like that so is it possible to stop it I shouldn't have done that maybe I, oh, I did learn one way to maybe get it to stop if I just reattach back to it. And then hit the breakpoint. Okay. And then I need to get it basically in a place. loser land over here oh god thank you all right save this shit just in case it crashes again okay god that's annoying Problem happens when I accidentally trigger a build in the middle of Unity playing. Okay, now I'm waiting for what? Okay, so you just started, that's fine. I see some rotation. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna see where it settles. I think I'm in that middle area where I'm. Probably, I end up making it move around more than it needs to. Is it gonna settle? It settled. Not bad. Not bad at all. comes to a stop. I feel like I could set its rotation speed up higher. So that there I don't like. And I think I know what's going on there. So there's two ways you can travel to get to an angle, clockwise or counterclockwise. And one is going to be quicker than the other. But if that angle crosses the, the 360 degree boundary to go back to the low side of it, then that means it's going to whip around. It's going to assume it's got to travel that larger distance between the, the two angles. 
So I know how to crouch. I know how to crouch for this. It's not a bad starting point. It's, I mean, it's not a bad place to be. And I'm on target. To finish this feature of rotating hands by the end of the stream, which will be real nice. Okay. So let me just encapsulate this a little bit. So let's see. Think about the different cases. Say from is it zero? F is it zero? Two equals one. In degrees, that is. In that case, I want the offset return to be one. Now if f was 0, and t was 359 degrees, in that case I want the offset to be equal to 1. Uh, sorry, negative 1. I don't want it to be 359, which is what it's doing now. Um, f equals 359 t equals zero. In that case, I want O to be one. It's almost like I'm writing unit tests here. I suppose I could switch over to my unit test library, but I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. Um, then I want to think about if I'm at zero and the target is on the other side, one eighty. Say one seventy nine O equals one seventy nine F is zero target at negative one seventy nine. No, sorry, one eighty. too much as long as it's do something reasonable. If it's just Yeah, these cases aren't as interesting. Uh, 
Let's do I think I got the gist. So, I need to just figure out the distance between the angles going one direction or the other. So, we'll start with the uh, clockwise distance, meaning the degrees go up. If I got them reversed, it doesn't matter. Uh, clockwise distance will be if 2y is less than from y sure this is going to start out being really inefficient. Sometimes I just need to make sure my thoughts are correct first before trying to come up with a more efficient code. So counter distance. Swap these. Okay. So clockwise distance is less than counter distance. We'll travel clockwise. And that means the offset. travel which means to subtract 2y from 1 from 1 y from from y otherwise the opposite direction from y from 2y I could be calling these angles instead of y I suppose um, so then I still need to account for this kind of crossing over the border type thing. So I'll say if offset is less than zero, offset, and we're going to add 360 degrees to it. All right, this is really like the perfect candidate to go in unit tests. Um, if it doesn't work for me on the first try, I might, or the second try, I might just go straight to unit test with it. Uh, so then return the offset. Okay, before I hit play in this motherfucker, let's just go over this one more time. So I'm saying I'm going to get the clockwise distance, I'm going to get the counterclockwise distance between two angles. If the destination if the two angle is less than the from angle that would be like a, like this case right here so if the two angle here of zero 
it's less than the from angle, then we're going to say add 360 degrees to the two angle to make it be 360 and subtract the from angle from it, 359, we would get offset of 1, just like, just like it says. On the other hand, if the two angle was greater than the from angle, which is like this case, then I would say uh, just 359 minus 0, whoops, No, 359, see, two angle is greater than the from angle, that's 359 minus zero, that would be 359. Okay, that's still the clockwise distance. It's just really, really long. So it takes me down to the counterclockwise distance. Uh, all right. I think that logic is probably correct. I also set the speed on it, <clears throat> the speed on the hands a little bit faster. I thought that would be more interesting to look at. I kind of like its its slow measured pace, but it um, seems like it might be a little bit better if it goes faster. like that it's road oh this area here is weird though I need to back away from that center point yeah something's still off um, that's too much rotating not bad. I wonder if that little twisty bit I had right in the middle was more because I was in the center point. I'm, I'm just going to go around and see if it suddenly starts going the opposite direction. Actually I think I might have made that code correct. Yeah, so it's not doing the thing where it suddenly flips and goes the opposite way, which is great. The speed that's moving out of the lake Oh, there's there's the crazy rotation thing. There's the crazy rotation thing. So if I go... Yeah, <laughs> there's some bugs there. There's definitely some bugs there. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm going to take it to unit tests. And I think it's really a boring 
piece of stream content for me to write all those unit tests. Not like everything I do is so riveting and entertaining, but I feel like uh, unit tests are kind of like one of the most boring things to watch. So um, I'm going to hit the stop button on the stream there, and I invite you to come back and visit with me tomorrow on the Wednesday session. I believe that I will kick off that demo with a nice little, uh, that stream with a nice little demo of these hands working much better. Um, and then I'll continue on the next part, which is actually pretty exciting too, which is uh, the navigation of the hands from one area of the level to another. And uh, got some interesting ideas for that. I want to do kind of like a path mapping type of a thing. All right. Stop in the stream, stop in the stream, stop in the stream, stop in the stream. Thanks for being with me on this one. Stop in the stream, stop in the stream, stop in, stop in, stop in.